Hey guys, welcome to another RL Crap video. In this video, I will be talking about the Summoning Staff. The Summoning Staff can be argued as the best item in all of our Railcraft for early and mid game, and is still a top tier item in end game. While it does require 8 in magic to use, along with a gold ingot, ender pearl, and bone to make it, this staff allows you to summon powerful allies that can hard carry you to endgame and is completely worth it. While most RL crafters know about the summoning staff and its basics, many do not know about all the amazing things that can actually be done while utilizing this item. We're going to dive into the library of knowledge that the summoning staff has for us in this tier list. All 45 summons will be placed into tiers in alphabetical order. To better explain my tiers, D and F tier summons should pretty much never be used. B and C rank summons can be used, but you have better options, and summons in S and A tier are the ones you should be using in RL craft for just about everything. Before jumping right in, I will give you a bit of knowledge that will help you with your summoning combat efficiency. If you are crouching and a short distance away from the enemies your summons are fighting, your summons, pets, and mounts will do 2.5 times bonus sneaking damage, making leveling the stealth ability in your L menu actually useful. The stealth mechanic is surprisingly well implemented in RL craft, believe it or not. Think of it like Skyrim sneaking, but more blocky. Another thing is, you will need knowledge of a mob in order to summon it. Every mob that you get close to will unlock knowledge level 1, allowing you to summon the basic version. By defeating enough of the mobs, you will unlock level 2. You can also right click a mob with a soul gazer in your hand to unlock level 2 knowledge immediately. I would recommend doing this so you can summon the more powerful color variants of the mobs. I will not explain where to find the mobs for this tier list though, but most of the enemies are fairly common. If you want to better change between summons, you should place your most used summons in any of these 5 slots in your bestiary menu. You can navigate to these selected summons quickly in combat by pressing and holding Z, and then choosing the summon to swap to. This certainly comes in handy, especially for combining summons on the fly. The last thing I will mention is I forgot to put the etch -a tick on my list, which is created by combining an Argus and a Jengu, but this summon isn't even as strong as the Argus, which is a component to summon it. Despite the Echetic's fast attack speed and solid damage that scales with your weapon, the inconvenience of it needing to be combined, place it in the B tier. Now, without further ado, let's get right into our tier list. Starting off our alphabetical journey is the Abea. I, I don't know how to say that. Which surprisingly on its own is the best aquatic fighting summon. Should you ever actually summon this though? No. The summon that you should choose underwater is actually the Gru, which is a combination of a Cinder and an Argus, but more on that when we reach the Gru. Aquatic summonable minions are sadly very disappointing in our craft. Most get stuck in place, only move up or down, or just are too squishy to accomplish much. The Abea fits into the too squishy category. The Abea can swim fine and all, moving the smoothest compared to other underwater summons in fact, but it gets one shot by Roa's Threshers and defeated quickly by others, and it costs 4 focus to summon. So you can't have a lot out at once in other words. Without an extremely solid rapier in your main hand, the Abea is not doing much damage either, and by the time you have a god tier weapon, you will not need the Abea anymore. This fishy fits comfortably into the D tier. Next up, the Aegis. The Aegis is the staple of summoning in RL craft, considering how easy it is to get this summon and how solid the summon is. Aeguses are practical, hit hard, and are tankier than most summons. The issue with Aeguses is that they are slow, so they can't do much to dragons in mid-air and to other flying enemies. Despite this though, Aegis' stats and practicality are very high, landing them into the A tier. Next, the Agobemu. Similar to the Aegis, these do great damage, and are surprisingly fast on land. These frogs attack fast and can actually out DPS the Aegis. Their issue is they can't fly, but they can wade well in shallow water. Overall though, being limited to the land only is not helping the summon, and they are rather squishy. So the Agobemu lands in the B tier. The Archville. Sadly, this summon in my opinion is the worst summon in all of our craft. It costs 6 focus to summon, so you can only summon it once, or well have 2 out with a savage summoning staff, and this enemy only uses magic attacks. Magic attacks do not take your main hand weapon damage or enchantments into account. This in other words means you literally have a normal mob following you around, and you will be fighting dozens of mobs at once, so having one mob on your side is pretty much useless. Archvilles are super slow as well. 
The only use for Archvilles are if you have pet pinkies out. The Archville will buff the pinky strength since Archvilles buff ally demons. I guess it can also buff Kako demons and Belfs and Behemoths, etc., but the damage increase is low. The Archvel is our first plain F on our list. Now on to the Argus. The Argus hits just as hard as the Aegis, but it is also faster and inflicts instability on enemies hit, which can be useful against larger enemies such as dragons. The weakness of the Argus lies in its defense. If you want a bit more security, use Aegis, and if you want a bit more utility at the cost of the Argus potentially getting defeated, then use the Argus. The Argus fits into the A tier with the Aegis. Next up, we have the Astaroth. This mob costs 5 focus to summon and uses magic damage. While their attack range is a bit longer than other enemies, that still does not make up for its slow speed and low damage. If the Astaroth falls in battle, it will summon Shrites that get obliterated instantly by whatever killed the Astaroth, and the wither effect it casts on enemies is still not significant. The Astaroth sits at the top of the F tier. Next up, we have the Banshee. The Banshee is absolutely phenomenal and is our first S ranked summon. A Banshee is created by combining a Geonaut and a Dijin. Banshees can attack through walls, have high health, hit hard, and apply fear to targets. Similarly to the Shade Mount, Banshees will permanently fear enemies hit. Well, if it keeps attacking them. Dragons stand zero chance against Banshees, and it is one of the safest ways to cheese dragons in dens and grounded dragons. Moving on to the Behemoth. This is a magic damage summon and costs 4 focus to summon, so you already know where I'm going with this. This is the last time I will say this, but magic damage does not scale with your main hand weapon, so wielding a rapier or a weapon with enchantments will not increase the summon's damage. This summon deals okay magic damage, but it falls off hard in late game. The Behemoth sits in the D tier. Now, the Belf. A worse behemoth, but it does only cost 2 focus to summon it. That trade-off doesn't mean much, and it still goes into the D tier. Next up, the Cinder. This summonable minion is useful as a combining component of some stronger fused minions, but on its own, it's just a flying magic throwing slow and weak attacker. The Cinder goes at the top of D tier. Alright, now the Clink. This mob is terrifying to fight as an enemy, so you may think it would be a strong ally, right? Sadly, it is not. If the Clink's damage wasn't magic, it would be more solid, but because it is also a magic attacker, even though it attacks fast and deals more damage than the Cinder, for example, it still sits in the Deer tier alongside it. Now, the Darkling. This summon moves fast, its attacks scale off your weapon damage, in other words, it is melee, and enemies that have Darklings on them are heavenly inconvenience, affecting their movement and attacks. This summon, however, does have its drawbacks. Despite it being hard to hit and ruthless with a rapier in the summoner's main hand, the Darklings are super squishy and get one shot by dragon flame attacks, rendering them useless against dragons. Darklings also do very little base damage, so if an enemy has armor on, the enemy will go down slowly unless you have a very strong enchanted weapon in your main hand. Darklings also cannot body block any enemies in hallways, but despite all this, the Darkling lands itself into the B tier. Next up, the Jin. Jins are at around the same rank as the Cinder in D tier. Magic damage and the damage is low at that, etc. The thing the Jins are good at is making enemies float. Jins damage is laughable, but enemies are guaranteed to be defeated by the Jin at least, although it will take a long time and each Jin can only take out one enemy. If the Jin could make dragons float immobilized, it would have helped their ranking, but sadly they cannot. A solid D tier for sure. Next up, the Dweller. A ruthless ally when they are in shallow water, but slow and useless everywhere else. The Dweller also dies if it's on land for too long. Decent damage, but with such a drawback and not even useful when completely submerged underwater, the Dweller sits in the F tier. Next up, the Ent. Absolutely weak and slow. Even the bit of extra speed that the Scarlet and Lux versions give it is not enough to make these viable for anything. Their damage is okay and scales off your melee weapon like all non-magic dealing summons, but you have no reason to ever use this summon and the slowness makes them incapable of protecting you. A solid F tier on this one. Next up, the Frostweaver. A surprisingly useful summon for taking care of dragons and larger enemies because of its cobwebs. There are more useful summons for taking on dragons, such as Banshees for example, but these spiders are still an option. Frostweavers can help protect the player because its attacks, while weak, place a magical temporary cobweb, and the Frostweaver attacks very fast. 
Sadly, the Frostweaver's attacks are magic based. If they weren't, the Frostweaver would be a solid S tier. But because the attacks deal so little damage, the Frostweaver sits at the top of the C tier. Next up, the Gekin, one of the best ground summons. Gekins are fast, jump a lot making them even faster, and they deal considerable damage with fast attack speed. The Gekin is basically an Agobemu, but even faster. The Gekin sits at the top of the B tier. The Geonaut, a flying terror of a summon. If you did not know, the Geonaut has the exact same stats as the Aegis. Except for it does two less base damage, which does not make too much of a big difference in mid and late game. Geonauts because of this sit under the Aegises in the A tier. Next up is the Gru. Grus can be summoned by combining a Cinder and an Argus. The combat ability of the Gru is nothing too special, but Grus have a bit of a talent for flexibility. The Gru can fly, but the Gru's attack speed and damage is a bit under the Aegis. What makes the Gru useful though is its ability to actually fight alongside you underwater. Grus are not slowed down by the water at all and are the go-to method of underwater combat. Cinders die fast in the water though, so combining a Cinder with an Argus can be difficult. The best way is to summon the Argus in follow mode first and then place a Cinder right on top of it. Grus are aggressive and with a rapier in your main hand, Grus demolish underwater foes. The Grus can even take on sea serpents. Large sea serpents will dispatch them quickly, but the fact that the Grus can chase them down and attack them is nice. Gru sit in the A tier. On to another strong summon, the Jabberwock. The Jabberwock takes the crown as the strongest land based summon. Only by a small margin, but they're still the best. Jabberwock's running at something in a horde is something out of a horror movie. With attacks hitting as hard as the Aegis but faster attack speed as well as movement speed, Jabberwocks are complete freight trains. Mobs can barely react to the stampede before it's too late. For strictly land combat and dungeons, Jabberwocks leave nothing but death and destruction in their wake. A tier for the Jabberwock. Now back to the weak summons, we have the Jengu. Besides being a component of the Nymph and the number one accidental summon of my career, Jengus don't do much because their attacks are magic based. Jengus do not swim well underwater either. F tier for the Jengu. Kobolds are up next. Kobolds are surprisingly better than I thought. In hordes with the Savage Summoning Staff, these little guys actually get things done. Their damage being physical and scaling with your weapon helps a lot. What is best about Kobolds though is you can set up a summoning pedestal with Kobolds selected, and this works as a makeshift vacuum cleaner. C tier for the Kobold. Lacedons are up next. The number one easiest underwater summon to get bugged out and stuck going only up or down. The Lacedon is not very good. The Lacedon, like other aquatic based summons, will die if it is on land for too long. D tier for the Lacedon. Next up, the Manticore. These feisty flying summons are truly useful. They swarm enemies, attack fast, move fast, and deal good damage. Plus, they're extremely difficult for enemies to attack. Manticore's only weakness are that they're extremely squishy, so they don't last very long against dragons and bosses. Because of that, they're only going into the B tier. Next up, we have the Glorious Nymph, the healer of RL Craft. You can make a nymph by combining an Aegis and a Jengu. As the most efficient passive healing source in the game, nymphs will always be used by myself and most RL Craft players from time to time. Overall, the nymph would be S tier because of their usefulness, but the nymphs deal the least amount of damage compared to any other summon in the game, making its fighting ability next to null, which I did not know until testing the nymphs. One base magic damage with slow attack speed? Yeah, these things truly are just healers. The rare variants are not much better. Despite the amazing healing ability, which will always be helpful, I have to stay true to my own ranking system and place the nymph into the C tier. The Pixin is next. The Pixin is also in C tier besides the Nymph. The Pixin is terrible in combat, but it is at least a bit better than the Nymph. What Pixins do have though are passive buffs. You can summon these while mining to give you the occasional haste or speed buff. Moving on to the Reaper. The Reaper, while terrifying and interesting, does not move through walls and casts fear and blindness to opponents when hit, which can be useful against dragons. But the Reaper costs 6 focus to summon and uses magic to attack, making it do very low damage. Sadly, C tier for the Reaper, despite its fear ability. Next up we have the Reaver. I know this sounds crazy, but yes, we have 4 C ranked summons in a row. Reavers are made by combining a Jengu and a Jin. 
Reavers can be argued to be viable because their magic damage is actually solid. They attack fast, and they are really fast, so they can even attack dragons. But still, Reavers are magic based, so their damage, while not terribly unusable in early game, is still low and will never make it in endgame. C tier for the Reaver. Remobra. These cute little dragons come next. Remobras use magic projectiles to attack that deal low damage and poison enemies. These mobs are hard to hit and extremely fast, but they are also hard to find, so you won't have these summons available until most likely endgame anyways. Low damage, low acquirability, and low HP, D tier for our little dragon friend. Next up, the Skyless. Excruciatingly slow, does nearly no damage without you wielding a strong melee weapon, costs 4 focus to summon, and can only latch onto one enemy at a time. F tier. Just, just F tier. Now, we move on to quite the treat. I'm going to introduce to you the strongest summon from testing, the Spectre. Scoring nearly perfectly in combat and usefulness, the Spectre is the ultimate summable mob. Spectres deal massive damage that scales with your melee weapon, have incredible speed that allows them to attract dragons even while they're flying in the air, cast an uncontrollable and strong pull on enemies hit, and they attack extremely fast. Plus, Spectres are summoned using the two arguably most useful normal summons in the game, the Aegis and the Argus. Combining the Aegis and Argus will make you have a powerful Spectre ally. Even if the Aegis and Argus do not combine, you still have the solid and strong summons of the Aegis and Argus. The Spectre is a solid meta summon that deals with dragons and just about everything else with ease. That stands at the top of the top in the S tier. Next up, we have the Spriggan. This summon is created with a Jengu and a Geonaut. Sadly, this combined mob is absolutely atrocious, dealing very little damage. Spriggans heal themselves when they attack enemies, but that doesn't matter when enemies won't be attacking them anyways, and, and dragons one-shot them. It's not like Spriggans can bring themselves back to life. F tier. The last strong land-based summon on our list is the Sudamaru. This land-based scorpion deals incredible damage and has solid speed on land. These sit at the top of the B tier. There's not much more to say. These are solid, but nothing too special, but they're nice. Moving on down to the Sylphs. These can be created by combining a Jin and an Aegis. Sylphs attack enemies with magic though, and despite being tanky, you should really just use Aegises. D tier for the Sylph. Next up, the Tremor. Now, these loud summons can be created by combining a Geonaut and an Argus, which are two powerful summons. Tremors, however, are nothing too extraordinary. These destroy things and blocks, and sure, their damage is fine, but there are better options. If you want to use them over time to slightly increase enemy tremor spawn rates for blaze rods from all the explosions they will cause throughout your journeys, then go ahead. But tremors rest in the B tier. The Trifid, or Trifida, I don't know. These plants are devastating and hit the hardest out of every summonable minion, with a base attack of 6. These Venus flytrap looking plants, however, are extremely slow, and base damage of summons is not too important when you calculate rapier damage and enchantment damage. That's going to carry the damage astronomically anyways. The Trifid sits in the D tier. It just moves too slow. Next up, we have the Trite. These little summons are hard to hit and actually eradicate everything in their path. The base damage is low, but they attack really fast, move fast, and if they do get one shot by things, which is normally the case, at least they leave enemies affected by a wither. B tier for the little trite. Next up, we have the troll. And no, not the annoying troll that goes immortal. One of the more rare Arlcraft enemies, the troll is arguably the most interesting summon, because these trolls actually deal massive magic damage. The base magic damage of trolls is around 20 to 30, and they crit often, dealing 40 to 50 plus damage. Trolls do attack slow and have extremely low range on their attack, being about only 5 blocks, but it is interesting seeing a magic attack actually deal insane damage and one-shot things. You do not want to get hit by this attack. If you find a wild troll, keep your distance. This attack can one-shot you if you're undergeared. The troll sadly costs 6 focus to summon, has low HP, moves slow, and attacks way too slow. So despite it being cool, it sits in the F tier. Next up, the Vapula. These are created by combining a Geonaut and an Aegis. Oh, also 6 of the next summonable minions are summons that need to be combined. 
These two meta summons are stronger than the Vapula though, so you might as well just use the Geonaut and the Aegis because, like I said, magic damage is bad. The Vapula does attack fast and in bursts, but it does not make up for the low damage, making it rest in the D tier. Next up, the Vulcan. The Vulcan is solid, being basically a stronger Aegis, but other than that the Vulcan is not worth the summoning between Cinder and Geonaut. The Vulcan would need to be considerably stronger to be more worth it, so it only sits in the B tier, despite being such a monster. The Wisp comes next. These can be created by combining a Cinder and an Aegis. The Wisp surprisingly hits very hard for a magic based attacker. This may be because Shavaxi likes the thought of innocent travelers getting one shot from two passive mobs playing catch with one another, but regardless, we, ha we have what we have and strong hitting Wisps are the end product. Wisps give you night vision and the glowing status effect which allows you to be seen through walls, which doesn't serve any purpose besides in multiplayer because mobs don't see you through walls even when glowing. Regardless, C tier for the Wisps, and you don't really need night vision for anything. Now on to the last mob on our tier list that is not a combined mob, the Raymond. These little rats affect enemies with instability and their damage scales with your melee weapon. These rats are really hard for enemies to hit, but they are one shot by just about everything that can land a blow on them, so they're not incredibly useful for most scenarios including dragons. So despite them actually being useful, C tier. Alright, another wonderful summon is next up. Picking up the rear is the Wraith. You create a Wraith by combining an Argus and a Jinn. This summon is the hardest hitting summonable combined mob and moves at incredible speed. Tied with speed with the Spectre, the Wraith can also down dragons, and even with just an unenchanted iron rapier in your main hand, Wraiths can hit incredible numbers, downing dragons in only a handful of hits. Wraiths obliterate everything in their path, and if they do somehow get defeated, they leave a large high damage dealing explosion to remember them by. S tier for the Wraith. Second to last we have the Zaffin. By combining a Cinder and a Jengu, you get this green thing. Magic damage, yikes, D tier. Last but not least we have the Zephyr. This mob can be created with a Cinder and a Jin, and inflicts enemies with paralysis. Zephyrs hit only about as hard as a Cobalt as a base, but their damage scales with your melee weapon and inflicting paralysis can be useful. And yes, this paralysis does work on dragons. It is hard to paralyze a dragon that is airborne, and the dragon will not land if it's paralyzed, but a paralyzed dragon on land is indeed an easy target. I think fear is a more potent strategy against dragons though, because a paralyzed dragon will still fight back well and it will destroy your zephyrs if it gets the chance. We finish off our tier list with a solid B tier with the Zephyr. With that, I'm going to wrap up. The summoning staff is an absolute amazing tool, and hopefully now you know even more amazing strategies that you can use involving this staff. If you disagreed with my rankings, let me know down in the comments below. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed that video. Have a wonderful day gamers, do take care of yourselves, Bye bye